Welcome back to Dowry Models. In this video, I'm going to be making a start on the Scale Motorsport Photo 8 set for the RC211V that I'm building. And I'm going to be showing the build up of the rear brake. So, this is the kit part that you get, which you can see has got a fair amount of detail in, and with some detailed painting and washes and things, you could probably pull the detail out of that but I'm going to build this one up so that is the instructions for the rear brake assembly that what I'm going to be doing and on here it says one thing I'm going to change it says to use numbers 24 which are these little washers here and as you can see they're all attached with these sprue points um, and I really can't be bothered cutting off all of those and trying to clean them up and everything so what I've got is this old piece of photo etch with rubber backing from again it was scale motorsports but this was as you can probably see from the logo from a Ferrari model um, and it's got these little washes here that don't have any of those points and if you look there you can see that they're same size so I'm going to use these um, because they're a lot easier to to work with I'm actually surprised that they um, that they've done that because they do provide another rubber back sheet as part of this set um, and it has got these little washes in there but they're for something else they're not for they're not for that which is frustrating because I could have easily put those on there and uh, eliminated that problem. But there you go, it is what it is. So, first thing I'm going to do, obviously take the photo etch out of the cardboard and be very careful not to bend this because once you start bending it, it you start getting all sorts of problems. So, the first thing I want to do is cut off these centerpieces so get a sharp knife and I'm going to do both together just cut off the sprue points which I'm probably not even in camera for this so I apologise for that I need to actually see what I'm doing So that's those two pieces and because I've got a sharp knife you've got a bit of attachment points on there but for the most part it's not too bad but I'm not going to clean those up now because if I get my file and get that and try and sand it these pins are going to bend and I don't want that so what I'm going to do is assemble it and then clean it up after. So the next thing I want to do is get the actual, if I put it back into camera shot, sorry, the actual uh, disc parts themselves. So that's one off. And I'll put those out of the way because I don't need them. the second one okay same again with that so what I'm gonna do is get this file which has got a bit of a curve to it just so that I can go around the inside of these where it had those other attachment points just to clean those up but again I'm not gonna do the outside for now because I'll do all that at the end once it's assembled so doesn't need a lot on this but just make sure that you get any 
really rough edges off. And the same with that one. But yeah, these diamond files are invaluable when you're working with photo etch because if you've got something like this, for instance, it isn't going to get rid of the metal. All you're going to do is wreck your file, whereas the diamond files can withstand the extra uh, hardness of the, of the metal for what you're using. So that's my four main components done. So what we need to do is glue them together. So back to back on these two. And you want to get those so that they're all lined up so that your holes a few pins are lined up and the holes in the center are lined up and then each of these discs will glue around it like that and then you can see in there that you've got your uh, your vented effect that you get on the real disc and then once all of that is assembled and the glue's dried then I'll go around filing because it'll hold it all together so what I'm going to do is get my file I said don't use on the other bits and I'm just going to gently rub the back of it just to give it a bit of a key for the glue to have something to hold okay I'm not putting any pressure on this because I don't want to bend the photo edge I just want it to have enough so that it gives it that key so get my uh, tub bottle lid and some super glue which I should have prepared already and I didn't and then uh, and then just attach them so we know how it's going to go so what we don't want to do is get loads of glue spewing out everywhere so a tiny bit of a glue around the edge Just around here. But there's not any large area that I can apply glue to. Because I don't want it going on all the holes or anything. So I've just got to just work it around and get it as best I can. Make sure that you do get the right side because on the back of it, you've got where the um, the rivets would be. So make sure it is the correct side that you're working. I'm just going to put some glue on a few of these as well, just to uh, make sure that they stick down as well. Another tip is if you get a cocktail stick not the one that you're using to put the glue on and then you've got a way of holding it without getting glue on your fingers so and then it makes it easy to line up as well and again make sure you get that the right way around and then carefully line it up like so making sure that uh, all those spoke, the vented parts are lined up because they'll look wrong if they're not so 
don't know how well it shows on camera, but they, they're all lined up now. The next thing to do is glue these pieces on. So check where you want the glue to go. So I've got a ring all the way around there that I can glue to, which makes life a bit easier. some glue around some of these these uh, fins and there's no orientation for that that just glues on but when I'm doing round things like this I always roll it in my fingers like that just to make sure that it is centered properly and then the same on the reverse sure that they're glued down. And just like that. Give it a squeeze, roll it in my fingers, and that's done. And then once that glue's dried, I can then go round and tidy up the outside pieces and don't have to worry about it getting bent or anything like that. So the next part is to do the um, the centre hub part. So we've got this piece to do here. I'm just going to check which are the right parts. That one there. And that one there. And I do want to tidy these up before I glue them on. So get the file. And it doesn't need a lot, just enough just to take the burr off it very carefully on these pieces because they're very fine I don't want to uh, bend this so it's more of a stroking action than a actual filing I'm going and I'm going with the piece like that if I went like that it will bend it straight away gentle stroke of it like that just to get those bits off 
but yeah that's what I don't want to be doing with all those tiny little rivets as I'm sure you can understand why checking which is which so that goes on this side here I'm just working out how it actually aligns so I'm going to use the cocktail stick which I'll do from the back to get it centered so I can work out where that goes and it doesn't look like it Looking at that, it actually lines up with any of it. So, put that on there, I'll put some glue on and I'll glue it down. the next two pieces which just sit on top put that on there Don't need to worry too much if you get any extra glue on the outside of that because you can clean that up after after you're done. So that's the bulk of it done. I'm going to go and do the rivets off camera. Um, I might even wait until it's all painted up to do that. Um, make it a bit easier and break it up a bit. So. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.